For the past two years, there has been some significant drama going on within the Left 4 Dead 2 community. Leech servers, content theft, tournament cheaters and whatnot. However, among all this drama, there is one prevailing issue that stands out. An issue that affects everyone, spanning not only Left 4 Dead 2, but also being a risk for the rest of the Steam user base. The core of this issue is Helm's Deep Reborn. Hello, my name is Jays. Most of you will more likely know me from the Left 4 Dead 2 discussions, or perhaps you see me as the admin in the biggest Left 4 Dead Facebook group, and if you're an avid survival player, you probably know me from my administrative position in the Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 Top 10s group. But I'm sure you're not here to listen to me ramble on about myself. You're here because you're asking yourself, what's the deal with Helm's Deep Reborn? Helm's Deep Reborn is a survival map based on the Battle of Helm's Deep from the Lord of the Rings film, The Two Towers. The map was published on January 18, 2013 by Daniel Markovich, also known as Serious Samurai on Steam. Since that time, the map has amassed the staggering amount of 1,113,729 subscribers. Its popularity cannot be overstated. Over the course of six years, it has become the most subscribed mod in the Left 4 Dead 2 workshop. In 2017, a Kotaku journalist even wrote an article detailing the map's creation. Considering the sheer number of subscribers and its position as the most subscribed to workshop item, one could be forgiven for assuming that the map is amazing. If status was really all there was to go by, surely it would be a great map. The first thing I'm here to talk to you about today is why this is not the case, and why the map itself is really not that good. Of course, as with any map or campaign, there are both good and bad aspects. Unfortunately for this Lord of the Rings map, the bad outweighs the good. Like with any map or campaign, there's always good and bad things to be found. This brings me to my first point of this video essay, feedback to the map. I already have experience with beta testing video games in the past, where I was a beta tester for various mobile games, for example Dead Trigger 2 by Madfinger Games, and I currently help beta test maps and campaigns in Left 4 Dead 2, where I specialize in survival maps due to my extensive experience in that mode. So, usually when I give feedback, I like to start with positive things, so the person I'm giving feedback to starts on a high note, and is more motivated to fix the downsides, rather than feeling beat on or put down. After all, the whole point of feedback is to make the map better. Firstly, the map is very scenic. It's really immersive and the map as a whole looks really good. It utilizes a lot of custom models and some scripted sequences to keep the action going. Furthermore, there's two instances of slow motion effects. This may sound simple and insignificant, but the slow motion effects were placed at crucial and visually appealing moments. For example, after the wall is breached in the first minutes, or after Gandalf appears and you fight against the remaining horde. And finally, the map has a custom weapon, specifically made for it. I haven't been able to try it out myself or use it in my own playthrough, as you have to pay for it in order to be able to use it. However, as much as I'd like to emphasize the good things, there's many issues with the map that end up making it a rather unenjoyable experience. First of all, the map is extremely easy. Not only is there an easy hold spot for every instance you are forced to fall back, but there's so many supplies that you can be as wasteful as you want, and you'll still have plenty left over. In half the map you can simply keep throwing gas cans and molotovs into a specific bottleneck and nothing will ever be able to reach you. This would be easy to fix, just by removing a handful of the total supplies in each area, as well as starting out with weaker guns and slowly giving you upgrades as you progress through the map. The difficulty level of the map is currently so low that you can beat the map with only two players. I'm not even joking. I've been playing clips of my duo with a friend in the background this whole time. Furthermore, there's barely any infected attacking you. Many of the spawn points are very far away, which means the special infected have to travel a long way before they reach you, get killed and allow the next special infected to spawn and make their way to you again. This may not sound bad, 
but the end result is that you only kill three special infected every minute. In comparison, a round I played on the official survival map generator room had 10 special infected per minute, as well as three times as many tanks. Which brings me to the next problem in the map. The pathing is faulty. There are many instances where the infected will not path to you properly. To give an example of this, I'll refer to the holdout before the keep, specifically the ramp leading up to the gates which the infected will utilize to get to you. Instead of the infected going directly up the ramp, a lot of them go around the other side of the map and up the stairs, where they either die on the way from being too far away, or end up running into an infected only barrier that prevents them from reaching you. This is just one instance of bad pathing and bad spawn points, but it happens throughout the whole map and it makes the map far too easy. Not to mention, the infected seem to get stuck on everything, be it boxes, parts of the map, props or even thin air. Here's a smoker trying to dance around boxes and here's a boomer literally just staring at the wall. Lastly, the map is not endless. It's a survival map, but it ends after 28 minutes. Nothing spawns anymore and you simply roam the whole map until you leave or kill yourself. While it is a nice idea to be able to explore the whole map without being attacked by infected, it also goes against the whole point of a survival map, which is to survive as long as possible until you're overwhelmed. Giving a survival map an ending essentially turns it into an extended finale. Now you're probably wondering, but Jays, the feedback is great and all, but why don't you tell Serious Samurai about it instead of making a video? That's a great question. The answer is simple. I did. And he deleted my comment and blocked me from commenting any further. As a matter of fact, he removes all comments on his workshop page that put a negative light on his map, even if they are factual feedback. This brings me to the reason I made this video in the first place. Serious Samurai is actively censoring people. Whenever someone posts a negative comment on his mod, he deletes it to make it appear as if everyone unanimously loves his map. It doesn't matter that many of those comments were constructive feedback or detailed issues like the ones I listed at the beginning of this video. If it puts a bad light on his map, he will delete your comment and label you as a mindless troll. Multiple users have testified to the fact that their comments have gotten deleted by Serious Samurai simply because they weren't blindly praising his map. As if this blatant censorship wasn't enough, he also filed a faulty DMCA claim on my fix mod. What is that fix mod, you may ask? Quite simply put, Serious Samurai has been secretly updating his map to include changes to the UI, such as removing mutations, removing quick play, removing single player, removing the vote to start option in lobbies, removing the option to change the campaign winning game, shutting down your server if it's running plugins, disabling specific add-ons, removing many UI elements, and many more. This caused a lot of confusion within the community, as many players were wondering why they were suddenly missing so many basic options that they had been using for years. Considering Serious Samurai blocks and deletes comments of anyone who speaks out against him, people on the forum have gotten tired of constantly telling people to unsubscribe from Helm's Deep to fix their game. At this point, I was no longer the only one who has realized that it's time to finally stand up to this guy. I teamed up with another community member to employ a very basic fix that keeps the Helm's Deep map intact, but also restores the game's menus to their original state. It's simply not fair for people who don't want their menu and UI messed up. So earlier this year, we released this basic add-on of the original game resource files that ensures that the game's UI remains the same. Two days after its release, Serious Samurai filed a DMCA claim against it on the basis that I stole its content. That was an outright lie. My fix contained only default Valve files. Anyone who wants to is able to verify this by looking into the mod's contents themselves. The only content that he did indeed own was a screenshot of his that I used for the thumbnail, which I had replaced after Val asked me to do so. Hopefully you can see the pattern of behavior in trying to censor people. If the picture really was all he wanted changed, a rational human being would post a simple comment asking me to change it, or contact me and ask me directly. 
Obviously, given his pattern of behavior in making sure that the map's changes are enforced on as many people as possible, my team and I believe that he thought a DMCA claiming that I used his image would put an end to the fix. After all, he probably didn't expect me to refute the DMCA claim. Fortunately, he didn't pursue further legal action after I refuted the claim, and as such, the fix mod was reinstated and now has over 6,000 subscribers. After the DMCA incident, Serious Samurai continued with his attempts to harass me by telling people in his friends list to report the fix mod for stealing his assets, which once again was a lie. The Steam user Jimmy Russells, a former friend of Serious Samurai, currently shared his chat logs of himself and Serious Samurai in the comment section of the fix mod, which details Serious Samurai lying about the contents of the fix mod, as well as unfriending and blocking Jimmy Russells after he asked about Helm's Deep Reborn being the cause of the problems in his main menu and general UI. What makes all of this even worse? is the fact that Serious Samurai is not even the original creator of Helm's Deep Reborn. He actually stole the map. The original creators of the map and its assets are Team Chivalry. Serious Samurai merely ported the map to Left 4 Dead without their permission. You can see this mentioned within the update logs of the Left 4 Dead 1 version of the map over on GameMaps.com. According to various comments on the original Helm's Deep upload on Game Maps, Serious Samurai stole the map and ported it to Left 4 Dead 1. When Team Chivalry found out about this, they were kind enough to not have the port removed, as many players were enjoying the map. However, they never gave explicit permission to Serious Samurai to port the map, neither to Left 4 Dead 1, nor to Left 4 Dead 2. From what I was able to gather, the admins of Game Maps gave Wraith, a dev from Team Chivalry, the full control over the upload to Game Maps, because Serious Samurai repeatedly removed all the credit towards Team Chivalry. The following is a quote by Wraith, who is a dev for Team Chivalry. In this comment he says, I've been given control of this map as a representative of Team Chivalry. The map, ported to Left 4 Dead by Serious Samurai, is available for download once more. Unfortunately, Serious Samurai is unwilling to open a line of communication with Team Chivalry, and hence there will not be any new versions of this map released. So just in case it wasn't obvious enough, not only did Serious Samurai steal the map, he furthermore claimed it as his own, even when the devs tried to confront him about it. He repeatedly refused to credit the original developers of the map, and he also ported it to Left 4 Dead 2 without permission. Let that sink in, because it's about to make the rest of this ordeal a whole lot worse. So, let's get back to those changes I mentioned earlier. You may have noticed that those are not everything you wanted to change. Or maybe you haven't, because his update logs are essentially kept away from the public eye. He detailed future plans for changes in his update logs discussion post on the workshop page of his mod. There he listed that he planned to remove even more parts of the game. However, this section has since been removed as he intends to stop updating his map soon. Luckily, I have a recording of everything that was listed there, so you can pause the video to have a look at it. It's also important to mention that not all of his suggestions for change were bad. There's quite a few suggestions that would make for good fixes to the game. For example, fixing buggy sounds, faulty textures, or removing long-running bugs that have been plaguing the game for years. But the problem with these endeavors as a whole is that he is doing them based on his own opinion. He didn't ask anyone what they think of it. He doesn't make the information about these changes easily accessible, nor does he seek community input on these matters. And most of all, he appears to think that his own view is 100% right, with a complete disregard for anyone who disagrees with it. On the flip side of this coin, a friend of mine named Tsui has been actively collaborating with community members in the search for bugs and glitches within the game, and is working on creating fixes for those issues by listening to the community feedback and actively shaping his plans according to the community's views on the matter. Tsui, in this case, is achieving the same results, but in a much more open, honest and supported way. This begs the question, why does he incorporate these changes into the map instead of simply creating it as a separate mod. It is very clear that the majority of players don't want these changes in their game. 
After all, over 6,000 people have subscribed to the Fix mod in order to revert those changes. That is over half of the active player base that doesn't want serious Samurai's UI changes in their game. Why would he want to force these changes onto people who just want to play a map? After all, they subscribe to play the map and have fun, not to have their UI scrambled around or to be kicked out of their own server for trying to enjoy themselves with plugins. It gives off the impression that Serious Samurai just wants to force his own view onto unsuspecting players, as if he sees himself as a new game dev who's tasked with quote unquote fixing the game. This is further solidified as the most likely case as I have additional statistical proof that most people don't actually want those changes in the first place, nor has anyone been explicitly asking for them either. I launched three polls on strawpoll.com, asking the questions do you play single player, do you use the quick play option, and do you think the UI is good as it is. I'll put the statistics up on the screen now, and unfortunately overall only around 55 people answered each of these questions. So, this small sample size unfortunately makes the poll's results rather redundant. However, although the sample size of these polls is small, the amount of subscribers on the Fix mod is not. As of writing this script, the highest amount of daily players in 2019 on Left 4 Dead 2 was roughly 26,000 simultaneous players on the 25th of May, with the average amount of players being around 10,000 daily. Keep in mind, during this time there was an active free weekend, so many players who didn't own the game were actively playing it. The Fix mod has just over 6,000 subscribers as of the time of writing the script. Compared to the peak of 26,000, that means that roughly every fourth player does not want their UI tampered with, and compared to the average 10,000 daily players, it would show that over half of the player base doesn't want these changes. And these numbers don't even factor in the amount of players who aren't subscribed to Helm's Deep Reborn in the first place. It is very clear that a distinct majority of the community do not want his UI changes in their game, yet he continues to force them onto others with no regard for them whatsoever. So, to gain some further insight, I decided to interview some people who are familiar with Serious Samurai, so I could hear their opinions on the matter and have a broader view onto the community's opinion on the whole ordeal. First, I interviewed a friend of Serious Samurai, whom I will refer to as A. He requested to not have the chat logs shown, so I will paraphrase them. In general, A's opinion regarding the changes made by Serious Samurai was mixed, as some of the changes appeared beneficial for the game, while others seemed rather redundant. However, despite A's direct feedback to Serious Samurai, notably that he should release his changes in a separate add-on, the latter didn't appear to care about A's thoughts on the matter. In addition, I interviewed Sharples, who was also being censored by Serious Samurai, and Darut Leafstorm, an experienced member of the modding community. Sharples had a mixed view on the changes, as he considers some changes, such as changing elements neglected by Valve like the lobby voice chat icon, to be good, and others, such as removing game modes, to be bad. However, he firmly believes that Serious Samurai should openly disclose these changes, as well as upload them to the workshop as a separate add-on, instead of adding them to the map and trying to forcibly implement them onto as many users as possible by abusing its popularity. The root least storm acknowledges that, even if some of the changes are useful, they do not belong into a mod that should only contain the map. He adds that the only indication of it containing changes to the UI is the UI tag, which does not specify or openly show what UI changes have taken place within the mod itself. He also believes that the UI changes should be implemented into a separate add-on, as other interviews have also stated and agreed on. I also interviewed another experienced member of the modding community who wishes to remain anonymous, so I will refer to him as B. B generally stays out of drama and although he has not played the map itself, he disapproves of what Serious Samurai is doing and considers it to be morally wrong and stupid. He states that Serious Samurai should, at the very least, publicly disclose those UI changes by adding them to the description. Xby, a former pillar of the competitive Left 4 Dead community, has a similar opinion, stating that UI changes are unnecessary for a map and were implemented in a deceitful way using the map's existing popularity to force the changes onto unsuspecting players. 
X-Boy 2 was blocked by Serious Samurai after he called him out on griefing and ruining games, stating that it is no secret that Serious Samurai is censoring people wherever possible. The last interview I conducted was with Olda, an occasional modder who has several mods with thousands of subscribers, notably a menu improvement add-on. He provided some very valuable insight that many people probably don't know about. This is what he had to say. Sometime after I made that menu improvement mod, I was contacted by Serious Samurai. I had him on my friends list at the time. He asked me if I could make some features to the main menu for him. He linked me to his thread of menu suggestions on that Left 4 Dead workshop beta group, which is how I learned about why he wanted to use Helm's Deep as an avenue for his personal changes. He explicitly told me that Valve only used one suggestion and that all the others they disregarded, presumably out of laziness. I did actually try out a couple of things for him. The most interesting for me was that he wanted the icon of the voice box in the game lobby removed because voice doesn't work in the lobby. Now on the surface this makes sense. I mean, if Valve couldn't get voice chat to work in the lobby, then there shouldn't be the icons. But I soon realized that any changes made to the positioning or removal of icons on screen resulted in the vote to start function being made unavailable. I assume that's because the vote to start function is hard coded into the game. Anyway, this is why you can't vote to start using Helm's Deep Reborn. Either Daniel doesn't realize that that is the cause, or he doesn't seem to think that removing the ability to vote to start is a problem. Either way, it's titanically stupid. But the problem is deeper than you know. He wanted me to create a script that would prevent the existence of private servers. He has completely bizarre ideas of what Left 4 Dead should be. He doesn't want to give people choices, and he talked to me in a very controlling manner of what Left 4 Dead should be like. He isn't interested in anyone's vision of the game except his. It became very apparent to me that this guy was crazy and has been using other modders to make things for him so that he can get Left 4 Dead 2 to look the way he wants. I know that other people have far more dirt on him than I do. He's blocked me because he can't take criticism. It doesn't surprise me to learn that he's trying to use a ban list, and I'd bet he'll try to ban everyone on his Steam block list from accessing the map. He could actually do some good if he worked with the community, but he's trying to force changes under everybody's nose without their consent. Even if he could make the proper changes, which alone he can't, he knows that he won't get anywhere near the number of subscribers to that add-on as with Helm's Deep. Using his mod's status for those changes is pathetic, especially considering he's also doing the subterfuge on the backs of other modders who have contributed to Helm's Deep, such as Splinks and Rayman. While I think that the menu changes are all Daniel's idea, if I were them I'd want to distance myself from the drama surrounding Helm's Deep. It wouldn't be hard to make a case that they're also guilty by association. Lastly, I'd like to bring up Tsui's point of view. I already mentioned him earlier in the video, but he has been far more active and in contact with Serious Samurai than anyone else in the community, and he has written his own take on the ordeal, titled A Fair Psychoanalysis of Helm's Deep Reborn. You can find it linked in the description down below. I, I will not go into this in full detail, so I highly recommend that you read through it yourself after finishing this video. In this, he takes a more neutral and understanding stance towards Serious Samurai seeing him more as a victim of his mod's popularity rather than someone intentionally screwing over the player base. In regards to Serious Samurai's censorship of comments and negative remarks about his content, so he says the following. The negative comments that are deleted from Helm's Deep's workshop page are largely just mistaken as trolls than a deliberate act of censorship. This appears to fit the idea that Sears Samurai is infatuated with the rating and subscriber count of his map, to the point that he blends out the possibility of something being wrong with it, as the mod appears to be very successful and anyone who disagrees must clearly be trolling. But the majority of them also have legitimate negative claims that are removed and should be factored into a hidden recent rating, like Steam Store gamers do, only also taking review heuristics into account. This point ties in well with a tweet made by Chet Falazek, a dev for Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal 2, where he said that review bombing is making it clear that players have no effective means of communication with developers where they feel that their voices will be heard, so they use the one avenue available to them. He adds that, we can throw out reviews or we can fix communication. Serious Samurai, in this occasion, appears to have opted for throwing out reviews. However, Tsui argues that Serious Samurai is not to blame for this, but rather Valve is. 
Valve is already rolling out methods to detect review bombing, and could apply the same to workshop content to balance out instances of authors removing criticism by adjusting the item's rating. Going on, Serious Samurai asked Tsui whether he would be interested in working on the map-specific banned user script, which would stop specific users listed within it from playing the map. Although Tsui has been more empathetic towards Serious Samurai to this point, he completely disagrees with the idea of implementing a ban list into an add-on, as this would directly violate the workshop's terms of service, which explicitly state that you agree that any subscriber receiving distribution of your workshop contribution will have the same rights to use your workshop contribution as are set out in this agreement for any other subscriptions. Tsui ends his take on this ordeal by saying that the root of all problems is the Steam Workshop itself, notably Val's negligent handling and lack of moderation within it. Tsui ends his take with the following quote, To you, you're speaking out against his actions. To him, you're review bombing and a troll. Now, Originally, this was the end of the script. I would have proceeded with the outro, talked a bit about the script's development, and asked you to spread awareness of this ordeal. However, before I finished editing this video, some new developments were happening. Those developments were both good and bad, but let's start with the good, shall we? After more than a year of community backlash towards Serious Samurai's UI changes, he finally conceded and re-implemented single player and a handful of mutations. However, that's pretty much all there is for good developments. The bad developments are actually far worse. He has recently started working on configs that would allow him to override any server settings, essentially hijacking the server and being able to tweak it as he sees fit. He has already been doing this by making servers shut down if they were running plugins, or any sort of change that isn't in the default game. Now he is taking it a step further and is aiming to completely hijack servers. Time Lord Magnum has proven that Serious Samurai is indeed shutting down other people's servers at will, using the configurations within his add-on. In this screenshot, he details that Helm's Deep Reborn has been shutting down his server regardless of what map was being played. Time Lord Magnum is not the only server hoster affected by this. As a matter of fact, pretty much every person who owns a server that supports custom maps is at risk of having the exact same happen to them. Their server gets shut down for having plugins. To get back to the point of the ban list and other configuration files that are within the mod itself, I'd like to quote Xanagai on the results of his research into this matter. Within this add on are several source mod admin configuration files that he wishes to override. Installing the add on at the time of this video's upload will break the base fans plugin. I have been testing with another friend and found that using the maps B script, he can still get what he wants. What's even more frightening is that after realizing the B script's compatibility, it leads me to believe that he can indeed implement his own uh, custom band system on any server with the latest version of Helm Steve installed with his map running, even uh, those that he's not a moderator of. It's all possible from the available material on the maps B script alone. Following this discovery, he asked a trustworthy friend of his to report this security risk to Valve by using HackerOne, a website that Valve relies on for finding bugs and other issues within Left 4 Dead 2. However, it got declined, because it isn't the type of exploit they're investigating at this current moment. It genuinely appears as if Valve actually endorses all of this. Not only aren't they doing anything about it, but these seem to be actively censoring every mention of Helm's Deep and its related issues within the Left 4 Dead 2 forums. During the past weeks, if you as much as mention what Serious Samurai is doing with his map, your comment is immediately deleted. The same happens if you make a thread. It's not locked, it's straight up deleted. My friend Resurrectile Dysfunction can approve of this, as he has made multiple threads within the Left 4 Dead 2 discussion forum, which have been deleted, and he's even faced multiple forum bans for this. At this point, I do want to mention that the moderator, who goes by the name of Fox, has been very helpful in giving the community an open ear, and being someone we can talk to about this mess. He was the only one who actually took the time to be there for the community and actively listen. Unfortunately, Despite him doing everything he could possibly do, his superiors don't seem to care about serious Samurai's violations of their terms of service, 
and through the active censorship of this topic on the discussion forum, making it impossible to openly talk about it and raise awareness for these malicious practices, it appears they are actually endorsing his actions. Now, I beg the question, what can be done about this? Should we just silently sit here and let everything slide? Should we go on an all-out campaign and boycott the map? Now, I will not say what you should do. However, there's something that all of us can do. And that is to bring attention to this issue. The goal of this video is to bring awareness about the whole ordeal. I wanted to condense the whole situation about Cirrus Samurai and Helm's Deep Reborn into an overviewable and comprehensive video in order to raise awareness of what is actually going on behind many players' backs without their consent. Maps and all other forms of custom content on the workshop are great. They allow us to enjoy Left 4 Dead 2 for hours on end, with many mods even being superior in quality than the content originally made by Valve. But when someone is trying to force their own ideas onto others, infringing upon their privacy and autonomy, without anyone knowing about it or willing for it in the first place, we have to draw a line. Especially when that individual is breaching the rules of the very platform we are on. The whole community is appreciative of the work that modders put into their content. They even do it completely for free. But Serious Samurai, aka Daniel Markovich, is a disgrace to the community as a whole not only having originally stolen the map, but also abusing the position of power he is in as the uploader of the most subscribed mod in the whole game. Despite the fact that he may reason with himself when he blocks users, seeing them only as trolls and haters, or instantly filing DMCA claims as soon as a mod is remotely similar to the map, what he has done, and still continues to do, is not right. And we, as a community, should not stand for this. I hope this video has managed to showcase everything that has been happening in a clear light, and that people, now aware of the full picture of everything that's been happening behind their backs, can do something about it. And maybe, just maybe, if we raise enough awareness about this, Valve might finally step up and do something against it. So, thank you very much for watching, and have a great night. Thank you all so very much for watching. I know this is a rather long video, but I consider it a necessary one. It's actually the first time I made a video like this, and surprisingly I rather enjoyed making it, so perhaps I'll cover more topics in this manner if there's a demand for it. At this point, I'd also like to extend my thanks to everyone who has helped me with this video, be it by providing insight, support, or other forms of assistance. I'd also like to give Tsui a shout out for his invaluable contributions of providing further insights and points of view, as well as all his efforts he's provided for the community with his fixes and his meticulous investigation of the game source materials. I also want to thank everyone who agreed to do an interview with me to provide their point of view, and I'd like to give a special shout out to Older, Sharples, Ryan, Xanagai, and Resurrectile Dysfunction, who have been part of the forefront against these underhanded practices. Their efforts in raising awareness and researching the whole ordeal even deeper is invaluable to solving this mess. I also want to extend my thanks to Team Chivalry, who were open and communicative with me when I asked them about what had happened when Sirius Samurai stole the map for the first time. They were very friendly and helpful in figuring out some more information on this topic. Once again, I hope I managed to inform you and shed more light on this ordeal. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great night.